a meeting of two cultures. Ancient Chinese music interpreted with Liverpudlian exuberance. But though artistic barriers are evidently flexible, the isolation of the oldest Chinese community in Europe was almost as great as ever. The decline of Liverpool as a commercial centre has been felt keenly in the city's Chinatown. In the 50s and 60s, there were fortunes to be made, serving endless platefuls of chop suey and chow mein. But now, there are 30% fewer restaurants than there were two decades ago. The profits of those that remain have dropped by 15%. Locked into a shabby stretch of upper dockland, the Liverpool Chinese are depressed and rather desperate. Yet it was desperation that brought them to Liverpool 150 years ago. You're listening to BBC Radio Merseyside. The time now, 25 past eight. Now the Chinese Community News with Joan Chen. The language barrier hampers integration, but efforts are being made. Four years ago, Radio Merseyside started broadcasting a weekly news bulletin in Cantonese and Mandarin. Around the same time, the Liverpool Inner City Partnership decided that the Chinese needed a community centre. The result was the Pagoda of Hundred Harmony, designed and built in 18 months. Much of the credit for this must go to the intensive lobbying of Brian Wang, a student from Taiwan, who had been appointed Britain's first Chinese community worker in 1977. A purpose-built Chinese centre was, he says, long overdue. For many, many generations, and especially in the last few decades, the Chinese community, because of most of the people, either because they don't speak the language, or the short of understanding of the system of the institutions, bureaucratic procedure and the language, they are losing out the benefit which they are eligible as a tax and the rate payers. Its rise seems irresistible. And vital is the influence of Hong Kong's 1,500 millionaires, now seeking bolt holes for families and funds. Manchester could be on the verge of an even more dramatic economic explosion. Hey, 